Well, welcome to Choosing Plants. This is the channel where we make all sorts of wonderful vegan food that um, follows whatever particular diet style we're going for the month. So right at the moment I'm doing a soup smoothie salad challenge and so this particular video is going to be a soup video. I'm actually doing a video on making something, a recipe from Pinch of Yum. Her recipe is the best detox crock pot lentil soup. I'm gonna take out that detox part because I don't care about that concept whatsoever and just go with the fact that it's the best crock pot lentil soup. I've actually made other recipes from her website and they're very, always very good so I thought we would give this one a shot and I do like all the ingredients. So I would highly suggest go get a copy of this recipe. It actually looks really good. So we're going to need two cups of butternut squash and I have a real hard time with butternut squash so I looked up online how to go about um, making a butternut squash like peeling it and stuff and so what I found was to microwave it for five minutes in its entirety and then when you take it out it should be able to cut and peel a whole lot easier we shall see I don't know you need two cups of carrots two cups of potatoes two cups of celery one cup of green lentils three quarters cup yellow split peas or just use more lentils I think I have split peas onion garlic a whole bunch of garlic um, eight to ten cups of uh, veggie broth and a couple of teaspoons of herb de Provence and some more salt, which I'm not going to do the salt because the bouillon has plenty of flavor on its own for the broth. Um, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. I'm going to, obviously the butternut squash is in the microwave right now. It just got done. I'm going to let it sit there for a second to cool down so I can actually touch it. Um, I'm just using regular potatoes. I thought about using, I have these really cool potatoes from um, the... H Mart, yeah, my Asian grocery store, and they're white on the outside and purple on the inside. They're a purple sweet potato. I thought, ooh, that would be fun, and then I'm like, eh, I don't know what flavor that would imbue in there, so let's not do that. Um, I do have red potatoes, so I thought about using those, and I just decided I'm going with russets. They're easy, they're quick and fast, so I've got a couple of those scrubbed up. A couple scrubbed up. I decided I was going to leave the skin on, so I literally scrubbed them with like soapy water like with a bristle brush and soap and water and stuff. So they're they're pretty clean. And then my celery is in a bag. That's what I have left of my celery. I'm really bad about celery, guys. I do not take a stalk off and use a stalk. I literally just start chopping from the top and use it as I go. It works just fine. It never goes bad. Well, it goes bad obviously eventually, but it doesn't go bad really fast because you start chopping pieces off of it. And it's just so much easier. So I just wash the thing really, really well when I first get it, leave all the chunkies on it around the outside. And then I just use it as I go and it works. I, I don't know, you guys might think I'm crazy, but that's what I do. I bought some awesome organic colorful carrots. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? So I'm going to use some of those. I love Trader Joe's, they're so much fun. So I'm going to use probably, I need two cups. So I'll probably use the purple one and a couple of the orange ones and a couple of the yellow ones. Um, so that's pretty exciting to me. And then I'm going to get out some lentils and some split peas and I will show you guys what this looks like as I get it put together. Alrighty guys, so I wanted to show you in case you think that I'm too crazy about this whole keeping the celery together thing, it really does work out really well. So you grab it, you squish it, hold it together and you cut. I don't know. Do you think that's weird? Because it works really well for me. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I do with celery. So one thing I love about using um, organic carrots is that all you have to do is wash them. I don't have to peel them, um, which is so super handy. Anyway, I just thought that was so beautiful. Isn't that super, super pretty? That's what I'm gonna use. I'm super excited about this, guys. Doesn't that just look delicious? Isn't that super awesome? Oh, love carrots.
Alrighty guys, so here is my partially cooked butternut squash. So I'm not actually sure if this is gonna work or not, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this from what I learned online. So you're supposed to poke it before you put it in the microwave so you have vent holes and stuff so it doesn't explode. I never do that, I don't do it with potatoes, I don't do it with, uh, if you do, go for it, that's fine. If you've had something explode on you, I'm really sorry to hear that. I have never had a problem and I'm not gonna start now poking holes in something when I'm more likely to poke myself with the knife than I am to poke the vegetable with the knife. That's just how things work for me. So anyway, you're supposed to microwave it and then you cut each end off and then you can peel it. So we'll see how that works. I'm not real sure about this. I've not tried this before. Hopefully it works better than normal because peeling a butternut squash or any squash for that matter is really difficult. It's not easy at all. So let's give it a try. Alrighty guys, so chop off one end and then chop off the other end. And that actually cut really well. That was, that was pretty easy. And then you're supposed to be able to do this. Oh wow, huh, that actually worked. It is very hot still. I'm gonna do the top part and then I'll turn it over and do the bottom part. Alrighty guys, so other than the fact that it's crazy, crazy hot, that worked out, oh, forgot some, gotta go get that. But that worked out really well. So yeah, I would recommend that. Five minutes in the microwave, it's hot, but um, yeah, that worked. Cool. All right, so I'm just gonna chop this in half and get the seeds out of the center and then um, cut it into bite-sized pieces like I would a potato. Alrighty guys, so by the time I got done chopping up the potato, the celery, the carrot, and the sweet potato, you're supposed to have eight cups, because two cups of each. Well, that's my eight cup measuring, the, that's like right here. Yeah, right there. Well, I got a little more than eight cups, but uh, that's what we're putting in there for veggies. Um, there's more vegetables that actually go in there than this. I still have to chop up an onion, put some garlic in there, um, and then I need to put some lentils and split peas. So I'm going to get that transferred over into the pot, chop up an onion and get that in there. And then I'll let you guys see what's going on from there. Okay, so slight change in plans. I really was gonna follow this recipe all the way through, but apparently I'm out of green lentils. I don't know how that happened because I don't know what I used them in. I do have yellow split peas, so I'll use those. I have red lentils, which don't do the same thing as green lentils. Red lentils like absorb liquid like crazy and get mushy and soft and stuff, but that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm going to actually put the rest of this little tiny bag of millet that I have in there as well. I have no idea what that's going to do to it. It should be just fine though. I'm not too worried about it. Um, so I'm making some hot water so that the crock pot will already start out hot. Um, and I've got my chopped up onion right here and I'm going to throw some stuff together and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all in the crock pot. But that's what I'm going to be using for the uh, starchy part of it. That's not a vegetable. All right guys, so I actually do have herb de Provence, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Um, basically, I don't know what's in here because it says that there's spices and lavender. So spices and lavender, that's super helpful. So in other words, Google it if you wanna know what's in herbs de Provence and you wanna substitute something else. So yeah, I'll use it, I've got it, why not? So I've almost got everything in the crock pot and I will show you what it looks like in just a minute. All righty guys, so everything is in the crock pot and it looks beautiful. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that Herb de Provence thing because it smells like lavender and I'm not a big fan of the smell, but that doesn't mean it's not going to taste wonderful. So I'm going to turn my phone around and show you guys what it looks like and we will see what it tastes like in like six hours. Alrighty guys, there it is, the beauty of the crock pot. So the best crock pot lentil soup. And again, we've got butternut squash and potatoes and onions and celery and carrots and garlic and bouillon and herb de Provence. And I don't think I'm forgetting anything on that list, potentially. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna see what it tastes like in about six hours. 
Alrighty guys, so we have got soup that is made and I took the, you're supposed to take out like four cups of it and put it in your blender and blend it. And that just seems like way too much work. So I just got the immersion blender out. Highly would recommend if you don't own an immersion blender that you get one. It's very convenient. This is what the soup looks like. It looks beautiful. It looks delicious. It smells really good. I'm not sure what it tastes like. So we'll do a taste test in just a little bit and I will let you know how it tastes. I bet you it's gonna be yummy. Alrighty guys, so this soup is very yellow. Maybe if I had had some green uh, lentils to put in there, it would be more colorful. Um, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's flavor that matters. So I've already got it on the table for everybody to eat for lunch. So hopefully it tastes good. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. You know, I'm not sure what it tastes like, but it absolutely tastes delicious. Um, I put chopped up um, tomatoes and chopped up scallions on the table in case anybody wanted to add that to their soup. I think the scallions would taste really good. I'm not sure about the tomatoes, maybe. My um, nine-year-old absolutely loves tomatoes, so he might want some on his just for the sake of eating the tomato. But the soup is, is very different. I have never had this flavor before, I can honestly tell you that. Whatever this flavor is with the Herbe de Prov Provence in there, completely different. Um, so if you don't have that and you don't put it in this soup, maybe it'll taste like something you've had before. This is totally different than anything I've ever had before. I like it, it's very good. Okay guys, I would try this soup. It's definitely not, it's good. I would try making it with the lentils and the split peas like it says to in the first place. You know, follow the directions on the first time around at least. If I'd had them, I would have, but yeah, it's delicious. I would suggest that you try this. This is a great recipe. Um, so yeah, pinch of yum. The best detox crock pot lentil soup. Should give it a shot. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.